being in the space where you've developed this destructive behavior pattern and not allowing yourself to actually speak your truth and not allowing your authentic self to shine through because in one way you, you want to keep your secret to yourself so that nobody tries to change it mm. also nobody monitors you um, and in another way you're kind of almost screaming for help or to, to gain control in some element because I think for, for me a big part of developing bulimia was that um, I felt the need to be to be perfect and when I didn't feel like I could be a perfectionist I was looking for control or to grasp control in other elements of my life mm. and yeah I, I feel like I could start to gain control by binging and purging and, and, and exploring that I was also really obsessed with this whole thin inspiration thing yeah. I, I imagine it's even worse now because because yeah. of the power of social media when I was 12 social media wasn't a thing Facebook mm -hmm. didn't exist mm -hmm. Instagram wasn't even in the works <laughs> for yeah for me it was more like tumblr I remember looking mm. at all the thin inspiration on tumblr mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember just trash mags and ripping out photos of girls that were really skinny and sticking them up on, you know, right. on my fridge or on my wall. Also, when mm. I came to eating, I could almost look at that as inspiration. And, and yeah, it was super unhealthy. Um, but I think convincing myself that it wasn't a problem so that my secret could stay under the wraps just meant that uh, I started to develop dishonesty in other areas of my life from not honoring my truth, I could then see how that was translating into my relationships. Mm. So I could then lie to my partner about the fact that I had just binged and purged. And then, you know, then I could maybe lie about other things, which yeah. just became this really like spiraling out of control. Um, this, the behavior pattern then started to influence other aspects of my life to the people that were closest to me. Yeah, it can really be one element, like the eating disorder can be one element that you're trying to gain control and you end up losing control in other aspects. Yeah. Mm. When you're not feeding yourself, you're not, as you were saying before, you're not feeding your brain. So you actually like really lose a lot of brain cells. Mm. So you, you can't even really function properly in the mm. world. You can't, you don't have any room in your brain to think about anything creative that you want to do it's like you're just slowly killing yourself and killing a lot of you know all of your life force mm. and then naturally you just kind of want to isolate yourself because you don't even have enough energy or inspiration to connect with people or connect with other aspects of life outside of your world that you've mm. created your vicious cycle yeah and <laughs> and, and feeding the womb is not only you know, the womb is not only the birthplace for, for babies and new life, but it's the birthplace of creative ideas. And um, taking away the energy between, you know, the solar plexus and the sacral chakra means that you're actually depriving that space for new ideas to be born. Mm. And it's such, a, it's such a powerful space. That's where a lot of our self-esteem, um, a lot of our power comes from the, from the center here. And so by not feeding into this space or by you know with bulimia you're constantly taking away from that space and mm -hmm. I imagine a lot of scar tissue is is being formed and a good point to mention is actually that I ended up developing a lot of food intolerances mm. so later in life which I could see that triangular effect of you know my brother explaining to me the mind body and soul and if you deprive one you end up depriving all and it might not be an immediate thing you know, my teeth, he kept reminding me, your, your teeth are going to be falling out, you know? Um, you can see in extreme cases, people start to lose their hair yep. or they start to grow extra hair on their body because their body is trying to, with anorexia, people's mm. bodies are trying to keep them warm. It's been a huge process for you to like rebalance your gut too, right? Mm. Like be able to digest food properly. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. It's huge. I've had the same thing. Yeah. I developed fructose malabsorption and I was just, you know, having to avoid all of these foods that I love in the summertime, not eating mangoes because, you know, your body can't actually break down certain things. 
Yeah, that's a, um, a long-term effect that I only experienced in the last two years. Um, I think probably from, you know, having bulimia for about 10 years mm. um, is, yeah, I think that's the long-term effect of it, is that your body actually is confused when it tries to go through the digestive process. Mm. Wow. Um, and nobody wants to miss out on mangoes in the summertime. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> That's torture. Just, just torture. <laughs> it's not fair. Um, I think having that awareness of you might not see the immediate effects. You know, you might not see your teeth rotting. You might not see um, your digestive system starting to to fail, but it can definitely develop later on. And definitely. it's it's not it's so not worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 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 grateful for my relationship with bulimia because it's it has made me the person that I am today. It's made me fall in love with food as medicine and fall in love with healing processes for the gut and mm -hmm. to find out, you know, all these different superfoods that are good for the, the, the gut and for, you know, restoring flora in your gut. And this awareness that I have with the want to connecting with younger girls as well and youth and having an open communication. For me, I think one of my greatest desires when I was younger was to speak my mind openly mm. um, and I think just probably because of the way that my family was raised is that when it comes to emotional uh, processes it's easier to kind of sweep them under the carpet and pretend that they don't really exist um, and you know I'm also grateful for for that being a an opportunity for me to break that ancestral lineage mm. and for me to step into the power of saying, oh, hey, mom and dad, you might not have learned how to talk about these really important issues, but um, I realize how important it is for my brain to start to function or my heart to start to open. Um, I need to talk about these things because they're limiting my potential and I'm trying to step into my fully empowered version of myself. Mm. And um, I guess as a teenager, I didn't have that awareness and so I was just, ah, I just wanted to scream. I was so angry. Mm. <laughs> I just had so many feelings and I had no idea how to express them. Mm -hmm. And opening up that space for communication to say, hey, look, I'm really struggling with this. And, you know, I would really appreciate um, just an open conversation. Yeah. You know, the healing begins when you start to talk about what it is that's stopping you from stepping into your your potential yeah it loses its power so much more when you express it for sure because then it's spiraling around in your head and it's like as we were saying before like your kind of secret world then it just has so much power over you but as soon as you like speak it like just vulnerable i know it's intense and like vulnerable but just to like speak it out and tell people like this is what's been going on for me mm. it just immediately has less power of you because you've like kind of dismantled the whole um, just like intense internal mm. thing yeah and it's a weight <laughs> that you're carrying around on your shoulders yeah I, I, I feel that there's a lot of shame around um, saying that you know I'm really struggling with this thing and and you and you feel almost helpless and I definitely felt a lot of shame to talk about this openly and this is you know the first time I'm sharing this story mm. and it, it feels probably because I'm on the other side of it, it feels like I have to tell this story and I have to honor this process because, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be as powerful if it didn't turn into, you know, acknowledgement and acceptance and releasing and then also possibly inspiration for others yeah. to start to shift those patterns as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, a big part of that is allowing speaking about something that's been holding you back and allowing that to no longer overpower you mm. to step into your, you know, a new kind of power. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. It's such a limiting belief to think that you are only, you know, worth a small amount. And that's really, I think, what eating disorders can reflect is a really low sense of self-esteem. Yeah. And that's even if that was your story at one certain time of your life, it doesn't mean that you don't have the power and, and the space and the resilience to shift that mentality and to start to, to reassess 
you know, the path that you're on. And I feel like the greatest thing that I've learned over the last couple of years is that, you know, we are these ever evolving beings and we, and we are full of light. We're absolutely full of light. And naturally that means we're also, you know, we have the shadow side and, and, and merging them together means that we have that beautiful balance of yin and yang. We have that mm. beautiful balance of masculine and feminine and you can't see the light without the dark and, yeah. you know, vice versa. So it's really, really important to remember that you are a beautiful light being and you have the space and, and the birthright to absolutely shine. And there might be a lot of baggage and crap that you have to sift through, but it is totally worth it. Mm. And it's also never ending. <laughs> True. <laughs> and it's, yeah, so it's, it's important to start now. And if you're feeling that call to, to speak up and, and say, hey, I'm really struggling with this thing. And, you know, I can feel my self-esteem wanting to, 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 to shake to shake it up, shake mm -hmm. things up, release it. It's not, doesn't have to lay stagnant. Mm -hmm. And when we don't talk about things, we, we allow them to stay stagnant and, yeah. you know, we can, we can continue to transform them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Cool. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs>